Hello. Let me introduce you to my old lady. This is the Bride of Frankenstein. I put this machine together back in, I think, 2003. It's got an uh, Asus P4S800 mainboard, and uh, it's capable of taking an Intel 478 socket processor. That means either a Pentium 4, P4, or a Celeron. Now, quite frankly, a P4 is a little rich for my blood, or was at the time, so I used a Celeron. It, I managed to get a uh, 2.67 gigahertz Celeron chip. Yes, it's pronounced gigahertz. Look it up. And I also populated the main board with about 512 meg of RAM, which was very generous at the time. Very good little system. Uh, it's uh, really good, but uh, I really need to upgrade the darn thing, because I never used a very good system of Windows on it, and I messed up the operating system. And so I thought, I'll, int I'll upgrade to Windows 7. I have a laptop that I've been using for the last couple years that runs Windows 7, and uh, I thought that would be a good thing to do. And we need another computer, and I've had this one in storage for a while because, like I say, I bombed the uh, operating system. So I thought I'd upgrade it. Now the thing is, my laptop has uh, about two gigabytes of RAM on it. Yes, it's pronounced gigabytes, and this only has 512. So. I went out and I uh, got some more RAM from my boys at Directron.com. If you have old hardware, they're the guys to go to. And also while I was there, I noticed that they had P4 chips, and they were, you know, a lot cheaper now than they were then. So I got myself a Prescott Core P4 3 GHz full-on Pentium 4 processor. This is my baby. Check it out. Also, I got this... 21-inch CRT monitor from Directron a while back. It weighs a ton, but uh, it's quite good. So, now the P4 chip is uh, architecturally inferior to even the Pentium P3 chip, but it was a lot faster, and even though it was 32-bit architecture, it was still a pretty darn good system. Uh, it it's, runs a lot faster, but it's not as efficient, so it runs hotter. So, I've overheated this system once already, so I had to invest in a King Hell CPU cooler. I also put on a, cooler, a better cooler for my VGA card. I put on several CPU fans. So, yes, it makes the noise of a jet plane taking off, but it works quite well, or it did. And now it's uh, gone through its extended post, and it's recognized all the RAM, so I'm ready to go with the Windows upgrade. So let's get it on. Okay, I apologize for my uh, crappy video capture here. I have a PC with a video capture card. Unfortunately, it's this one, and it doesn't have an operating system on it, so I can't use it. So I'm back to my old Canon. Anyways, let me reset the system, and I'll start with the upgrade. Here we go. Will it run? Okay, going through the extended coast. Let's see. Come on, come on, come on. Will it work? Will it even read the disk? Loading files. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. I've read on the internet that uh, sometimes it can take a long time to load the files. But uh, this probably won't take very long. I mean, at 3 gigahertz, even though it's a single core processor, it's no slouch. And it's got a very fast DVD driver. I also uh, uploaded or upgraded the DVD driver, so this shouldn't take long at all. Yes! Starting Windows, here we go. Get the four balls. And that was as far as you got. This is the Microsoft Windows 7 four balls screen. The computer locks up and doesn't go any further beyond this. And there's nothing you can do about it. Or so I thought. Well, anyway, after this uh, upgrade failed, I decided to get on the internet and see if anybody else had run into this problem. And I found out about the four ball screen and what people would do. And they would do things like 
deactivate all USB hardware and every other ancillary thing in their BIOS that they could, and maybe then it would work. I wasn't too happy with that because I really wanted all of my ancillary things to work. So if Windows 7 isn't going to work with them, then what good is it? So I started looking on other forums, and I found there were a couple people who said that they were able to get Windows 7 to work by changing their power supply. I know how stupid that sounds. I was a computer tech for a lot of years. I mean, that, that's a, the butt of a joke. It's like the oldest joke on the internet. The way the joke goes is, some guy's working on his computer and his power supply starts to smoke. So he calls up his computer repair guy and he says, hey, my power supply is smoking. And the computer tech goes, oh, okay, I'll be by with a new power supply. And the guy says, no, 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 I've read about this new Windows thing. I know that now the way you fix your computer is you put in a software patch. So just email me the software patch and we'll go from there. And the technician knows that no software patch is going to fix this. But he, can, he knows he can't reason with this guy, so he says, okay, well, listen, uh, I'll try and uh, see if I can find that patch for you. And so what the technician does is he takes an old netware driver or something, renames it nosmoke.exe, and emails it to this guy and says, hey, I found this new program on the Windows download that says this will stop it from smoking. So the guy installs the program and keeps working on his computer, and a half an hour later he calls the technician back and says, hey, my power supply is still smoking. And the technician says, really? Let me, uh, let me check something here. Oh yeah, it says on the Windows website that you have to have a power supply that's modern that will work with this new software upgrade. So I need to go and upgrade your power supply in order for this patch to work and not smoke. The guy says, great, come on over and upgrade me. So the technician goes and upgrades this guy's power supply, which of course means replacing it with a better one, which is what the guy initially needed in the first place. So, like I say, if my computer could run Windows XP and Linux and Windows 98, for God's sake, why won't it run Windows 7? Well, all I know is, for some reason, the newer Windows systems do check and see whether you've got clean power or not at the motherboard level. And if you don't, Windows won't run. And I thought, you know, I've tried everything else. I've got nothing else left to lose. New power supplies are cheap. I'll try one. Well, it worked, you know? And actually, I was able to get Windows 7 to boot on the old power supply and upgrade it, but it never ran properly. It would always lock up, or it would it would uh, stop running or something at, at different various times. So that indicates some kind of a flaky problem. But with the new power supply, I haven't had a problem. Now, one thing you'll notice is that um, when you have an older power supply, the uh, side decal looks like this. And as you can see, it lists 5 volt, 12 volt power, and negative 12 volt, and all the other with their current capacity. Now, this is the uh, side sticker from a new power supply. And you can see that there are two entries for 12 volt power. And this is the thing newer motherboards use a lot more 12 volt power, especially for all their cooling he needs. So, in order to power all those fans, you have to have a lot of extra capacity for 12-volt power. And I'd added a whole bunch of fans to my case, and now the darn thing wasn't working. So, upgrading my power supply actually fixed my Windows problem. Like I say, I know how dumb that seems, but that's what worked. So, if you're having trouble with a Windows 7 installation or upgrade, that might be the problem. I mean, I bought that case for my computer, and it included a power supply, and I really have no idea how old that case was when I bought it. I bought it from a discount warehouse. That case might have dated from the 1990s, for all I know, and that uh, power supply may have been perfectly fine with a Pentium 3 processor, but with a full Zoot Pentium 4 with a lot more cooling or any other kind of uh, high-powered modern processor, that old power supply just couldn't keep up. So, that's my tip for today. If you're having 
computer issues where it lock up suddenly or it's not running properly or you can't get it to run in the first place when you're installing a new operating system could be your power supply especially if it's an older computer anyway thanks for watching